accident this morning. Oh goodness, really? Yeah. And so, oh, um, um, sorry to hear that. Yeah, she's fine. Thankfully. Um, yeah. she tried to dodge a dog. Yeah. Which she did. The dog's fine. Uh, but she hit the right side of the guardrail on the bridge and the left side of the guardrail on the bridge. Oh, no, and um, her mom was concerned. Yeah. Oh, she has a bruise on her chest from, from her seatbelt. Yeah. And said her chest hurt, which again, mm-hmm. I think is more muscular. Absolutely. And, yeah. So but she was, I'm going to take her in the ER just to make sure. I said, yeah, that's not a you know, oh, sure. great idea, of course. We end out, check it out. Yeah. That's all right. So. All right. We shared it there. And I will ask, uh, how can how can wives, you know, wives <coughs> maybe mm-hmm. pushing men to go to the doctor more than men oh, sure. are willing oh, to do it? Exactly. How, how yeah. can they encourage their man to go? Yeah, so. very good. Thanks. Sounds good. If we find that answer, yeah. <laughs> it'd be impressive. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go international if we find that. That's right, mm-hmm. absolutely. <clears throat> when um, when should you be screened? Yeah, well, um, the current recommendation, of course, is none. <laughs> but yeah. oh, but typically we start talking at forty. Got so uh, yeah. So when if somebody comes in and tells you, "Hey, I'm not peeing," is that when you decide, okay, we should we should now? Yeah, screen for I it? mean, it's kind of part of the. It has been part of the annual physical until this most recent report came out. Mm-hmm. You know, but urinary symptoms are really the the leading cause at this point of, um, you know, why we would screen. Um, if we can next week, uh-huh. um, Dr. Clothier mentioned cholesterol. Sure. Um, like I put on there, I'm putting my, my meals on there and one of the gentlemen oh, yeah. on there posted, he said, Hey, he said, you know, he said, I've been eating eggs too, but my cholesterol's through the roof now. Well, I've read some recent data mm-hmm. that says that cholesterol is no longer really food based. It's, uh, yeah. it's genetics and inherited Absolutely. more likely. It's okay. always been true, I think. And, and now the, um, the CDC, NIH, and everything kind of agree. Okay, so yeah. we, next yeah. week let's hit Yeah, that'd be a good, yeah. good one. Yeah. All right, well, welcome back to On Point with JP and Dr. B. In studio, we have Dr. Norm Clothier, but we have Lori getting ready to come on with her inspirational thought for the day. The choice, as always, is yours. She is coming in from Phoenix, so these have been pre-recorded because it is 4 o'clock in the morning in Phoenix, Arizona. And like blue eyes here, I'm sure she is snoozing (laughs) under the stars out in Phoenix. So you might hear good evening, but they are pre-recorded. But you know what? They're still inspirational. So action. Tell us what Lori's got to say. I think a gr- another great thought. Another great thought. I can tell you that many times I've had couples come in and one or the other will say, I love him or her, but I don't like him right now. So great thought is to understand the difference and to keep on loving anyway. Well, so hopefully Liking will come around. Hopefully that gets our day started. Right. Hopefully. So Is that why there's a like button on Facebook and not a love button? <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we'll have to explore that next time we're talking. So we're talking men's health with Dr. Norm Clothier. We've been talking the prostate. We're going to continue to talk that because that is a kind of a controversial deal right now, especially with the new release information from all the different medical organizations on examining or not examining. And so, Dr. Chloe, we were talking at the break, and with us should just continue that conversation. Sure. And, uh, you know, we uh, talk about the prostate usually at a men's annual physical, or if a male has some sort of urinary symptoms, like 
having trouble starting or stopping the stream or getting up going to the bathroom overnight. And what the, uh, the essential conclusion is to the idea of not screening the prostate too much because uh, just to catch up, it, there's no evidence the digital rectal examination reveals much of anything at all and is not currently recommended. And the PSA, the blood test everyone's heard about at this point, has really not been found to be helpful in any kind of outcome with the prostate. So what the uh, discussion point is, is what we tend to call shared decision making, which is basically having the discussion with your doctor and the doctor with the patient about whether a male even wants to be screened for the prostate and how. And at this point, I would tend to say the only way I feel is valid is to have that discussion and then if someone wants to be screened, to do the PSA blood test starting at either 40 or 50, depending on family history. There's no evidence that screening before 40 would tell you anything at all. Um, and then based on that outcome, you then have to decide what to do with the result over time. And if the result is perfectly normal in the low range, I think that's a great deal of some peace of mind. It's very hard to say whether that person would ever get a prostate cancer or not, but odds are very good they don't have one if it's down the low range. And then if you follow that on about an every other year basis and see it go up more than would be normal, which is a small increase over time, then you can decide whether to do some further tests like an ultrasound or a biopsy. But as we were mentioning in the first segment, the risk of hospitalization after a biopsy is actually 3%. And in fact, if you look at age 70 and above, uh, that risk is about 7%. So that's a lot of people having complications to a biopsy. That's not just a simple pr procedure there. So what I'm understanding is that unless you have a family history of uh, prostate cancer, that probably you don't need to be checked every year, that you can go uh, quite a that's, while, perhaps never. Right, that's, that's the current evidence. And again, when we look at evidence-based outcomes, it's sometimes very different than what people perceive. I have a very common issue that I mentioned too in the first segment about young men coming in and saying, well, my granddad has prostate cancer, so I need to be screened. Well, the prostate cancer is an advanced age issue. And as we said, many men will die with a prostate cancer, but not from a prostate cancer. So even then you have to determine when and how, if at all, to start screening. So I, I discuss it with men starting at 40 as whether they want to do the blood tests and follow it along. But if I had a result come in that was a little elevated and somebody said, you know, I want to just do watchful waiting and see how that goes with time, I think that's their decision to make as long as you have that discussion. Well, and Dr. Clothier, so talk to me about the difference then between prostate cancer and an enlarged prostate. Absolutely. That's uh, basically every male will get an enlarged prostate with some urinary symptoms. But that, while very annoying and inconvenient if you have to go to the bathroom a little longer or a little more often, is not a cause of death in any realm at all. And that's, uh, and that prostate cancer can cause enlargement of the prostate and cause similar symptoms, but it may never leave the prostate. And again, men may die with the prostate cancer, but not from it. So what, what do you, how do you treat, and can, a, and can a person treat themselves for enlarged prostate, or do they need to go see their doctor? Right, the, uh, the supplement, salt palmetto over-the-counter, and there are a number of over-the-counter supplements that include it, in, uh, along with other vitamins, uh, can be helpful. Another thing is just, uh, again, healthy living, good nutrition, good exercise, actually helps benefit the prostate enlargement to a degree, too and not drinking too much caffeine at night, and a few things that tend to irritate the urinary system anyway. And I'll tell you a big one that's often not mentioned to men is don't take decongestants if you have any kind of prostate enlargement or a urinary trouble. Decongestants can irritate the prostate enlargement, and again, that's not a cancer, but it can make it more irritated and uh, therefore make it more difficult to go to the bathroom. You had mentioned earlier about a reference, uh, I think a website where they could go and find, because one of the things I'm thinking is wives are going to say, oh no, that's it, I've heard all Absolutely. this, so now we've uh, got to, you've got to go to the doctor. Where can they go for information? Yeah, uh, the uh, clearest source at the moment would be aafp.org, which is the American Academy of Family Physicians.org, and then backslash AFP, which is American Family Physician, the journal. Uh, that is the October 15th, 2015 edition that has prostate scan cancer screening 
uh, discussion is the headline article in that journal. Uh, so aafp.org backslash, backslash AFP. Now, I will say the idea of hope, uh, of someone's wife having them come in for a physical is actually an incredibly good idea. And that doesn't mean we're only doing the prostate. And in fact, if they want to tell their husband or uh, brother or friend that they don't have to have the dreaded rectal exam at this point, I think that may lead more men to the doctor. We then could screen better for heart disease, diabetes, skin cancer, other health issues that are far more important and compelling than prostate cancer. We're talking about prostate cancer today, but is that because the media has made such a big deal of it, more than the medical profession? I think that's true. I think there also was the, the hope, because prostate cancer is actually very prevalent, that we could somehow screen it and head it off. What we've determined from outcome-based evidence is that while it's rather common, it doesn't cause death very often. It, you know, it's a, uh, as I quoted in the first segment too, you'd have to screen a thousand men to maybe save one life from a prostate cancer. So the odds of finding something really treatable and curable and, and improving function in life for a longer life are incredibly low. You know, Dr. Clothier, you know, in, in talking about prostate uh, mm -hmm. cancer and, and enlargement of prostate, where can men and women go to look up for themselves and find some of this documentation and some of this evidence? Uh, I'll tell you, that would be a challenge beyond this American Academy of Family Physicians uh, review article. Uh, I have the actual sources of the, uh, the studies in front of me. I think most people would probably rather do anything, including reinstitute the digital rectal exam than read the study. <laughs> but but it, there's a nice summary in this article, and if you do look online, you can actually look it up by page number. Page 686 has the key discussion points regarding prostate screening. Let me just briefly give an overview of that. Prostate cancer screening with a PA test is optional because the chance of harm from screening is greater than the chance of benefit for most men. And I think that's a real key issue is that you may end up having uh, the, the anxiety of a possible cancer, treatments that may cause impotence and incontinence. That may be far worse than just having something dwell within the prostate that will never change the outcome of your life in any way. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, you've been listening to Dr. Norm Clothier. Dr. Clothier is with the Family Healthcare Associates. Oh. I'm in Richardson. I don't know why I can't get that. I yeah, go there for God's sake. That's right. okay. I, you know, I know the company name. Yeah, uh, that's it's good. Family Healthcare good. Associates. I always just call it Family Healthcare. I think I leave the associates part off. Yeah, well, we go by FHCA, Family Healthcare Associates, and so our website is FHCATX.com. And we have uh, several locations throughout the Metroplex. We have some in Arlington and Fort Worth, Mansfield. We have Plano, Allen, Garland, and Richardson. I happen to be at the Richardson location. But uh, we believe in family care from life to death, everything in between, and we believe in screening for health issues. And uh, the prostate cancer discussion is a big one. But I think, again, if more men would come in for screening in general, we catch more health issues in general, and that would be a great right. thing. All right, well, folks, stay tuned. As we come back, we're going to be talking, how did JP lose an entire man? And Brian Beck, our certified personal trainer, who is also my personal trainer, will be on live with us. So, folks, stay tuned as we come back to On Point with JP and Dr. B. Action, take us away. Where are you going to lose the entire man right now? <laughs> so that, <laughs> I just lost the size of two men. Yeah, that's right. Then so, quick, we'll then see you. Well, Dr. Clothier, say time. goodbye to everybody. Oh, we lost your head. Oh, oh yeah. Goodbye. The headless Thank doctor. Thank you for having me. That's you right. Will. All right, so I we'll talk to you again head. next Monday. Hey, cholesterol yeah. and Very the heart good. next week. Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. That'd be good. Uh, I think it's valuable. So, Thank you, Dr. Clothier. All right. All right. Well, folks, we're going to take a little trip down Radio Lane here. Radio of course, Lane. Dr. B, say right. hello. Hello, hello. And so, see the no shave? He's got it going on, looking got pretty it. sharp. There we go. We're going to go show you what's going on in the board with Action Jackson over there. And we're going to wander around the studio. Oh, I've got some exciting news. Guess what? I will show you where Mark Davis does his show with Case Guy here. So, oh, look at this. We got the uh, 7 o'clock hour right here. Brian, go in. Tune in 6.20 a.m. Brian, say hello to everybody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? YouTube world. So, I'm enjoying the show. Prostate hey, thanks. cancer. Prostate hey. cancer. And don't screen. Hey, no rectal exams. I'm all about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, fine for that one. So, <laughs> all right. So, hey, guess what? Right over here. 
is where my good friend Mark Davis will come on the air. We talked with him the other day. So tune in for him as well from 6 to 10 a.m. And uh, get a board, another board item.